Hello everybody, this is a Olivetti N20 from 1925. It's the second typewriter made by Olivetti after the M1. The production of this typewriter started in 1920 after the interruption of production for the war conversion of the plants during the Fourth World War and continued till 1933. Olivetti sold around 81,000 typewriters of this model, not bad. The typewriter is on a wood basis with two handles. It has a keyboard with the XERTI Italian layout, 43 buttons with 86 typing characters. Olivetti produced two versions of the M20 very similar. M20 typewriter could have a carriage with 90, 120, 160, 200 and 230 spaces. This one has 90 spaces for a standard A4 sheet of paper and this model has 230 spaces. A very large carriage, you see. It seems useless to have such a long carriage but uh, it was common to use uh, protocol format uh, sheets uh, of paper, very large. It was used uh, by lawyers uh, for contracts, uh, etc. This one is the first version of M20 with a knob in brass. It's from uh, 1925. And this is the second model with the knob in plastic from 1928. You see here. The edge of plastic was coming. The serial numbers follow the numbering after the Olivetti M1. Till 1926, the first two numbers indicate the year. You see here, it's from 25. After the 1926, there is only the serial number, as you see here in this M20 typewriter from 1928. Let's compare this first Olivetti model, the M1, with the M20. The production of the M1 started in 1911. This typewriter is from 1914. The N20, produced since 1920, is derived from the M1. You see here, they are very similar. M1 typewriter was a very complicated typewriter made of 6,000 pieces. Very difficult and long to build. To build only one of these typewriters, it took 25 days and the production was no more than 10 typewriters per day. So with the N20, Olivetti made some betterments and simplifications. If you see the inside, the Olivetti N20 is much more simple. In Olivetti M1, the kinematics of writing is much complicated. In Olivetti N20, it is much more simple. You see? With this model, Olivetti increased a lot the production. From a production of only 5,000 M1 typewriters to more than 80,000 M20 typewriters. You can see also in the lower part of the typewriter. Do you see the differences? M1 has more complex parts. Another change between N20 and M1 was the uppercase and lowercase letter system. To carry out this operation with the old M1 and with the other machine of those years, the wall carriage of the typing bars is raised and lowered. You see, in the M20 it's a basket of typing bars who move up and down. You see? Another improvement is the guide of the carriage. The M20 typewriter was very robust and durable. If you see this spare parts catalog of 1950, it's still selling the spares for the Olivetti N20, 
a typewriter of 20 or 30 years before. It doesn't happen now. You can find the spares for an electronic device of 30 years ago. Let's look at the keyboard. But before I want to add the missing buttons, luckily I have a huge stock of button spares. I inherited the spares from my father. He was a repairman. Every button is made of a carton part, a glass and a metal ring. Very accurate details. As usual for the period, the 1 and 0 is missing and you had to use the I and O instead. This is a shift. And the shift block for the majuscules. Here you can change the color of the ribbon. This is the backspace. This lever is to change the ribbon direction in M1. Quite the same in M20 of 1925 and in M20 of 1928. These are the margins. This is the margin bypass. The bell mechanism is quite the same of M1. And in N20 there is the same mechanism of M1 to prevent you from typing after you hit the margin. The bell advises when you are near to the margin, you see. After some characters there is another mechanism so that when you are at the end of the line, the lever gets in the way and prevents you from right footer. The interline has the four positions and this is the lever for the interline. If you want to move the roller independently of the ratchet wheel notches to make corrections, center the letters on a line, etc you have to press the button on the knob. And if you press this lever on the knob, you restore the previous situation. This is the lever to move the carriage back and forth. You can insert a sheet of paper using this guide. And you can adjust it with this lever. With this lever you raise this paper clamp flaps. It's useful in case you have many sheets of paper. I can write something. The moving of the typing bar is very smooth. These typewriters represent the four steps 
of uh, Olivetti in the typewriter market. I think uh, it is an exciting journey through history. Many thanks for watching.